Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the LeverX webinar series, a free educational service offered to SAP customers to inform and demonstrate SAP functionality and industry best practices to improve your business performance. Our webinar today is entitled SAP Recipe Development New Release Overview. SAP has been dramatically investing in their PLM recipe development solution. In today's webinar, we will discuss the latest announcements and features SAP is showcasing. In addition, we will demonstrate some of these new recipe development features. My name is Ralph Davis, Marketing Manager of LeverX, and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Before we begin our topic, let me briefly introduce you to LeverX. LeverX helps companies increase business value by leveraging existing investments in SAP solutions. Okay. Thanks, Dan. So there's a little bit of a lag. Okay, good morning, good afternoon, hi. Uh, so thank you, Ralph, for the introduction. As you mentioned, my name is Dan Bender. I work in SAP Solution Management. If you're not familiar with what that group does, we kind of act as a somewhere in between the world of development and everybody else. So we kind of try to take the, uh, the business needs that you guys have, turn them into technical so that our developers can go build it, and then we take the technical stuff they give us and we turn it back into kind of consumable information so that you can figure out what's out there and how you can use it. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to spend just a few minutes kind of going through some of the topics that Ralph mentioned before. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some background here around you know, where we are from recipe development perspective. Uh, for a lot of the people on the call, um, I'm sure this will be repetitive. So uh, I will go through it relatively quickly so we can get to the new stuff. Um, and then I'm going to get into the new development section, talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's upcoming, and then get you into the impact analysis tool, which is a tool that is uh, now going into ramp up. Um, so, uh, and then Dave will take you through a demonstration of the solution today. Um, so from a trending perspective, <clears throat> you guys know this as well as I do. You know, the way we look at the marketplace today is, is there's, a, there's a couple of big problems or challenges that everybody's facing in terms of building new products or managing the process of building new products. Um, in the process industry especially, there's a lot, of a lot of challenges because a lot of our customers are consumer products or they're chemical or, um, or they're working in the pharma or the life sciences styles industries. And, and what you end up in those spaces is you end up with an enormous amount of changing influences in terms of how you build products. Um, one, of the, one of the trends that we see is it's just simply, you know, making sure I'm working on the right stuff at the right time. Um, this is probably not going to be a big component to today's discussion, but it is a, a challenge in terms of really understanding that I'm, you know, putting my efforts and I'm using my resources as effectively as possible. Part of this is also really, you know, capturing the ideas from the marketplace and really understanding this. And I think developers have such a much more complicated job than they ever used to because they're expected to not only know the science behind building a product, but also really understand what are the influencing factors that's going to allow somebody to either want to buy it, uh, where it's going to make it a differentiator compared to somebody else, or, or it's going to be influenced by something like uh, compliance or, or a sustainability consideration that goes into play. Secondly, is the, the bottom line is we all understand the customer is king. Certain industries have had this issue for a while. Other industries are really coming into it. But really, it just comes down to the bottom line that that whole concept of a batch size of one, um, you know, that whole ability to really individualize the product in such a way that allows you to really connect to your customers so that, you know, they have that brand loyalty moving forward. All right, Dan, thank you for that great uh, intro segue into the recipe finder, uh, re recipe simulation tool. Uh, demonstration I'm about to give. I'm logging into my Fiori launch pad. So here you can see the Fiori launch pad. It's uh, really easy to work with. It's very straightforward. You see a number of tiles here and you can see three groups of tiles. My home, uh, my, my the DBK development area, and my recipe developer analytics area. So you can have and work with your groups in, in any way. It's very easy to work with up here. You can see the group panel, and up top you see the three groups that, I, that have been created. Down below, you can create a new group. You know, simply click on that and type in name like DBK demo. And then you go to a tile catalog or to the other groups and drag and drop the tiles onto your screen that you wish to use. Real easy to work with. 
All right, so let's go and uh, start a recipe finder. So I'm just going to go to the recipe finder tile, start that up. I had another single sign on, it's not working on this, so. All right, so here you can see the recipe finder screen and the layout on it. And I, you just log in and I didn't do anything. And what happened? All of a sudden there's up, up here in the left hand corner, we see two tabs. Uh, we see work lists and there's zero of those. And we can see find recipes and there's 1,233 of those. What the system did is on, on the login, it automatically went out and found all the recipes. So because, you know, this is a HANA based system, the system will automatically find all the information because the whole thing, the whole idea with the recipe finder is you're going to be working with recipes. So you're logging in and the system by default is saying, hey, let's bring all the recipes. The, thing, the next thing you do is across the top is your filtering. So this is how you can filter what you're looking for. Uh, so you can look uh, for types. Well, this is recipe types. What recipe types do I want to look for? And you can see here the system's going to come, come out and list a number of recipe types which you can work with. Uh, or, you know, what is the status? Is this released? Is this to be released? You know, what, it, what status is, is, the, is your recipe in or what plant? So you can you can put any number of these search types in here, and it's an and you know I want general recipes and uh, and recipes that are in uh, sign off or release. So I can see all what you know look at all the recipes I need that are about to be released I can work on, etc. Over here on the left side are really more recipe centric things like I'm going to look I I have to go out and replace all the um, aspartame in my my recipes because we're making a market shift uh, for our product line 